Hello my lovely Floss Tube friends and welcome back to my channel. Warm warm welcomes to you all. And here we are. The 30th of December. This is a, this We're on a trend here. So for the last three or four years, every single time I've done my year end review of the year, it's always been recorded on the 30th of December. So this year is no different. Although this year has been so different. I've done a lot of reflecting over the last sort of two days of not only the year, but of my stitching journey for this year. And I have to say, after watching some of the Floss 2 videos of people's whip parades for 2020, it makes me feel a little bit better that I'm not the only one that feels that they didn't really achieve as much as they would have liked. That's not everyone. Some have just been like stitching Trojans. Good on you. I, on the other hand, don't feel that that's exactly how the year has gone. But then given that the year has been everything I thought it wouldn't be. <laughs> um, my thoughts and views of where we're at now, are, well, we'll share that along the way. But I have to say that I honestly thought at the beginning of the year, when I came back from Arizona, back in the beginning of March, and I got we got put into lockdown, I honestly thought, well, yeah, lockdown and COVID is terrible and it's awful. However, the flip side for me was, think of all that time that you're going to get back. You know, four hours of commuting a day back. Because I'm not dancing and we're not going out and social distancing. All those evenings and weekends, that's all free time. Well, that was how I viewed it. It was free time. Other than obviously gardening and walk the dog. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That, that, is, that is the crux of my life. My life were sit here, work from home, walk the dog and do gardening. That's... That was it. The rest of the time, theoretically, should have been stitching time. So in my head, I was telling myself, you're going to get so much done. You're just going to be like, amazing. You're going to be like, finish, finish. <laughs> Massive progress. Yeah. Let's just say, after doing the slideshow and looking at my Excel spreadsheets to track where I, you know, where I was in two... 2019 versus where I am in 2020 I'm a little bit disappointed in fact a little bit disappointed is probably not quite strong enough <laughs> so on a reflections note for those that well a lot of you have been with me from the very start now would you believe it if I told you all that the very start was six years ago Six years ago. I mean, we're heading into the seventh year of Floss Tube. So that that is heartwarming and humbling anyway. The fact that I'm still here. And you're still here with me. And for those that are newly joined throughout the course of that six years, you've, you've still come along for the journey. And, and yeah, um, it, it's, yeah, I didn't realise it had been that long. You know, you do these videos year in, year out. And you honestly think, oh, you know, it's been a few years I've been doing Floss Tube. But... Once I actually looked and I was like, seven years, we're heading into the seventh year of Floss Tube. So, so congratulations all, you've all stuck with me. <laughs> you've all put up with me and my highs and my lows. Um, but thank you, because yeah, if, if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing the videos. So, thank you. Um, was it a productive year? Well, I think I've sort of, sort of answered that in the intro of the video. I don't think so. I'm, I'm actually really quite disappointed with with where I'm at, given everything, given the type of year that we've had. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not overly stoked right now. Up until two days ago, I didn't actually think I'd done too bad. But I say this at every single year in review that... I didn't think I'd done too bad until I actually did it. And I'm like, actually, I didn't do bad at all. This year, I think I think this year is like the worst year yet. Out of seven years of doing floss tube and seven years of stitching, yep, this is by far the worst year. But then given the type of year that we've had, it's hardly surprising. I just had much higher expectations and hopes, I'll be honest with you. Um, 
So just as an overview, before we crack on and get into the slides and you can see the comparisons of, you know, where it was in 2019 versus where it was in 2020. Um, so I started the year with rolling 15 projects from 2019 into 2020. So 15 projects was where we started for the year. Throughout this year, I've had three new starts, which when I reflect on how many new starts I had last year, there was a hell of a lot of starts last year. So three does sound like a very small number. But then in my head, I was like, well, you don't want to be starting loads of new ones because you've got so many big projects anyway. Um, but the saddest part of this year is in all of this, with all this time that I thought I was going to have on my hands and, you know, nothing else was happening. So I honestly thought I would be stitching so much more. I got one finish. <laughs> One. <laughs> Admittedly, I don't necessarily do very small projects. Most of them are either medium size or above. Um, yeah, I just, I just honestly thought more, more than one, maybe. Even if I'd have started a few more smalls so that I had a few more finishes, one. Um, but the other thing that sort of flips out of this is... My oldest whips are from 2016, so they're like four years old. I have two projects that are four years old, and would you believe it, that the two projects that are four years old are the two projects that are honestly thought, or th and even still, think that they're the most pulled out projects that I stitch on, yet they're still nowhere near done. So, yeah, that's... um. Don't you just love to reflect? <laughs> so should we have a little look? Come come with me on this little look of where we was at and now where we are at. And you tell me whether you think anything is any better. So we're going to do this the same way that I've done it every other year or for the last, last year. And I think the year before. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. But last year we did this where I'd done comparison slides side by side so you could see what I see when I look at everything. So first up, I've, I've put them into their categories as best I can. So the first category is the whips that were rolled over from 2019. So these were already in my whips and these were just the ones that moved over into 2020. So first up is my lovely Haid Alternative Reality uh, by Josephine Wall. And this one is stitched on 25 Count Magic Guide and it's one over one. This is one of the ones that was started in January of 2016. So it's four years old and that is as far as I've got. Which... In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't really look like a lot, but when you're working on more than one haid and various other projects, you would need to be just constantly stitching on the same one to see massive, great big chunks of these. Well, or just getting serious stitching time. And like I say, I don't actually feel that I've done very much stitching at all. And the spreadsheets don't lie, people, okay? I'm going to say that. Spreadsheets don't lie. You'll, you'll see what I mean when we get to the end of the slideshow, okay? Um, so what was my, my, my personal goal that I set? I mean, I didn't actually roll into 2020 with any plans for the year. I sort of said I was going to wing it. But although I said I was going to wing it, and I did sort of wing it, um, I did sort of set myself some little some little goals, some little milestones that I would like to get to on each of my projects in my head. It was like, it was a, if I get there, it'd be nice, but if I don't get there, you know, it's, it's not, I'm just, I'm not going to be upset by it. And for alternative reality, the one thing that I did want to get done, or I did want to get to by the end of the year was to get to her face. So we sort of got a face. We've got, we've got the front of a face. I know we're missing a cheek and an ear, but it's sort of there. So for me, that's like, well, that's a face goal met, in my opinion. So I'm, I'm, I'm not overly worried about that. The only bit that does worry me is that it's four years old and that's as much as I've done on it. Even though I do feel that it's one of the projects that I pull out quite frequently. Um, next up is another Heaven and Earth design, Peacock's Lagoon. 
I'm not going to say who the artist is because I can't... Well, Syro Machetti. I think that's how you say it. I've probably absolutely butchered it. Um, it's a very big project. This one is stitched on 25 count magic guide. It's two over one in half stitch. And this one was starting in October 2018. So I didn't really do that much on this project. Not as much as I would have liked. So we got the corner, like the final corner of the moon done. That that moon, I have to say, that is confetti heavy in that in those sections where the moon is. So it was slow going for the moon. But that said, there's no excuse for the bit where I've started over on the left hand side where that's all block colour. There should have been a lot more stitching done on this project. But that said, I haven't really pulled this, this project out very much. So that would explain why that's the best I've done. But it's such a big project. You, you pull out the fabric and you see how big and it goes on my biggest set of scroll bars. It's hardly surprising that, you know, I'm like, well, you know, it's not going to be finished anytime soon. So, you know, it's going to take years. So we'll just stitch it when I feel like it. Um... Next up, as you know, this is my my love. My Evening in the Park by Chatelaine. I would love to see mine look like this. <laughs> but it doesn't. Because mine looks like this. <laughs> so, Evening in the Park by Chatelaine is stitched on 25 count hand dyed fabric by Stephanie in the colourway Abyss. Now, I am almost... 95% sure she's actually discontinued that colour now. So I don't think you can you can get the colour. Um, and it's being stitched two over two for the crosses. And obviously there's a ton of specialty stitches in these. But I love it. And this is the other project that is four years old. This was started in December of 2016. It should have been done by now. But it's not. Um, and then when I looked at this comparison where I put them side by side, and I'm like, is that all I've done? But then I have to, you, with these, you have to remind yourself. So not only have you got the stitching to do, like your normal stitching, you've then got your specialty stitches, which can be a little bit more time consuming. And then there's all the beading. So what you can't see on this picture is both of the corners have now got all their specialty stitches done. The right-hand side corner has got all of its beadwork done. The gates are beaded. Um, yeah. I mean, I have got the borders around the outsides. I mean, so where the trees and the lanterns are is the finished piece. It's finished article around, around those sides, all barring the beadwork that needs to go on. So when I sort of looked at it initially, I was like, God, is that all I've managed? But the more I look at it, the more I'm like, Do you know what? That's not bad. The fact that I don't just stitch on this solely and I, or I don't just have sort of two or three projects that I work on through the course of the year. The, this, I don't actually think I've done too bad. I mean, I started the year off with two trees and two lanterns and only one portion of that final border around the corner. I've now finished all of the border around the corners on both sides um, and we've got a ton of lanterns there and we've got four trees so I have mixed feelings I would have liked to have seen more but I respectfully accept that it's one of those projects that if you try and do all of the lanterns say I'd get bored. So I have sort of flitted and floated from place to place on this project just to sort of stop myself from sort of getting burnt out on trees or lanterns. Um, but because of that, I'll, I'd stitch or I'd do a bit of beading, then I'd pack it up and put it away and then pull something else out. So maybe that's, yeah. Topic of conversation at the end of this is going to be my plans for 2021. We'll just talk about that further on because yeah it's like to be four years old when you look like that we don't want to be making that a five-year-old project <laughs> so next up winter white santa uh, by mirabilia again what can i say 
yes, I'm disappointed and yes, I know. I know you're looking at the same thing that I'm looking at thinking, is that it, Teresa? Is that the best you could do? So this one is stitched on a 28 count Tempest Opal by Chromatic Alchemy. It's stitched two over two and his skin is stitched one over one. And this one was started in October 2017. In my defence, I love the fabric. I love... The I love the fact that it looks like clouds, it looks like a snowy winter sky, and I love the fact that it's got twinkles in the fabric. The bit I don't like is actually putting my needle into the holes in that fabric, because you can't see them. So one of the downsides of working with um, the, I say high count, 28 count is not a high count, but it's 28 count, then it's hand dyed which shrinks it slightly and then it's opal which apparently can also sort of have a tendency to shrink it so before you know it although it's a 28 count it doesn't feel like a 28 count to me it feels like a 32 count or a 36 count um and i really really struggle to see the holes and i think that's really the off-putting bit but i absolutely love the fabric and i love the chart i love the design but again, it is one of those things where I don't tend to find myself very... I'm not drawn to projects that have got winter themes when it's not winter. But then by the time it is winter and, you know, we get... The dark comes in by four o'clock. I need broad daylight to be able to stitch on this, to be able to see those holes. Plus extra light and extra magnification. So, yeah, that's my excuse for that. I'm not... I'm not not doing it and I will need to try and, I don't know, incorporate that in throughout the course of this year just to get a bit more done because that needs a bit more love. It's been loveless for 2020. Next up is Andromeda, another Mirabilia. Now, you know, me and her have a love-hate relationship. I loved her, then I hated her, and now I like her. And the reason for that was because throughout the course of 2020, you'll know that I had this overwhelming urge that it looked like someone had smushed her in the face because there was an error. Somewhere around the nose, mouth area, there was a problem. There was an error. A lovely lady on Instagram, which I think was Welsh Stitcher, oh, I have said in previous videos, um, she reached out to me and pointed me in the right direction as to where I'd gone wrong. So I made some alterations to the face. So we're now, we like her again. But it is one of those projects that although I like her, it's like, mm, I don't seem to want to stitch on her very much. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I know I've still got a lot of skin to go. And that one over one skin is a bit of a killer. <laughs> So she is stitched on a 28 count Cyrus by Chromatic Alchemy. She's being stitched two over two with skin one over one. And she was started in October 2017. Um, what to tell you? Other than I really do need to get a finish out of this soon. There's a whole lot of rock that needs to be stitched and the rest of her skin needs to be stitched. And I need to just get her done. I know that. So I'm not, I'm, yeah. There's nothing more to say other than I know. <laughs> I know. Then next up is my lovely little mini Red Queen Red Dragon. Heaven and Earth Design. Have no idea why I forgot to put the artist on there of whose artwork it is. Can't remember off the top of my head. This one is stitched on a 28 count magic guide. Two over one half stitch and it was started in December 2018 and I've got to say I'm not disappointed with this one um in my head I had an aim that I wanted to get to the little draglin so I could see the little draglin I achieved that I mean I know he's not fully there we have his wing and we have his face um it would have been completed that whole little section would have been completed if I hadn't have run out of one of the one of the floss colours. So where you can see the little white spaces in his body and in his wing, that is one colour that I've, I'm have i yet to purchase. I still need to go and order the, the floss for that to complete that and obviously finish that tiny corner on the right-hand side. Um, but overall, 
not overly disappointed with that one. I feel like I achieved what I wanted to. And I don't know. Maybe it's the tenth stitch or the half stitch is making it so that it moves faster. Next up is Autumn Promise by Judy Dixon. That picture does not do it any justice. And I have to say that the images of these are a bit like the Chatelaines. That it just doesn't do it justice. You have to see it in the flesh. And again, with these images here, it's the same thing. You know, I look at these images and think, well, it doesn't look quite so pretty when you look at it on this picture. But when you see it in true life, that is, it is gorgeous and shiny and beautiful. And yeah, I absolutely love it. And for this one, I think, you know, I'm, I'm actually really quite stoked at how far on I got with this. So this one was stitched on a 28 count white Lugana. I started it in March 2019 and I'm pleased to say that I have completed the overall stitching uh, along with the border. There's a little bit of cut work still to be done. There's some um, hard hanger areas and some drawn thread and some beading still to be done. But this is one of those projects that you need to have your head in the game, read the instructions, then reread the instructions, then reread the instructions before you actually commit to it and do it. Um, and with the current way that things have been, the dynamics of having, you know, family around me almost 24-7, it's not a project that I want to be pulled out if I'm likely to be either distracted, disturbed. Um, it's, it's just not. So the reason that that hasn't moved very much in the latter part of this of this year is because this is where all the, you know, you know the old saying, what is it, measure twice, cut once? This is one of those, you know. Read your instructions twice before you actually commit to any of it. So, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with where it's got to. And I will make sure that this is the type of project that I will only pull out when my head is in the game. And I know that I'm not going to be disturbed because this is not one that I want to end up messing up now. Um, but overall, extremely happy with where I got on that. Next up is my story keep life is an open book in Paris. Um, it's another heaven and earth design uh, artwork by Amy Stewart. Absolutely love this. This was an impromptu start because this was the design that I picked to do my um, cross stitch for beginners parking mini series. So I had no intentions of actually having a new start. But then I, you know, when I was thinking about how was I going to sort of show people parking um, for beginners. I was like, well, you can't you can't show them how to park with a project that's already started where you've already got parked threads because they, they won't understand how they got there. So the only way to actually do that was to was to pick a new project and do it with them from the very, very start. But obviously, I didn't want a massive, great big project. I have enough big hades. So I decided to go with this story keep. Um, so... It's stitched on a 25 can magic guide, one over one, and I started it in September 2019. I used the first portion of this in 2019 to do the video where I showed how you do parking in my Cross Stitch for Beginners mini series. With the intention that, yes, I will stitch on this, but there was no hard and fast rules with this because it's it, it was an impromptu start. It's almost like a, a sidekick to everything else that I do because I'm like, well, everything else needs a lot of love because they're all so big and they're going to take me forever. This one was a much smaller design and I wasn't expecting to stitch on it. So it's one of those ones that in my own mind, I keep saying to myself, well, it doesn't matter if that doesn't get stitched on. I'll keep rolling with it and I'll keep doing it. But there's no deal breaker on when this gets done. I'll just work on it as and when. So here and there, I've pulled it out through the course of the year. I'm I'm actually happy with how much progress I got on that one. So I don't I don't feel like I haven't done enough. Um, next up is Castles in the Air by Long Dog Samplers. Again, this is another one where you look at that picture and it's like that's really not a pleasant looking picture. It's another one like the Chatelaines. They just don't look anything until you see them stitched. And then when you see them stitched, it's like, wow, wow. So this is stitched on 25 Count Lugana in the colorway Georgia by Chromatic Alchemy. I'm stitching it two over two. 
I'm using a Silks For You thread uh, PR161 I believe it is um, along with some Petite Treasure Braid and I started this in December 2019 and I'm actually really quite happy with how much progress I got so there's over a page and a half there it's one of those do you know what these long dog samplers I think if I hadn't have incorporated other colours the, the Treasure Braids where I wanted to sort of have a bit of sparkle and a bit of bling in it if I'd have just used the one colour, this would have been one of those, not mind-numbing projects, but you know the projects where you just want to sit and stitch, but you don't want to have to think too hard because your brain's going to explode, that type of thing. Um, you just want, not mind-numbing, but you want a thoughtless stitching where you can just sit, just sit and stitch. No real thought process goes into it. You just do it. Um, this is one of those. So if you're ever looking to get one of those projects where you just don't want to have to really have something that's too testing or too trying on the brain or you're likely to make ton of mistakes i always find that these with one color or one variegated thread are perfect and i'm i'm really happy with how much i've achieved on that this year given that i've got as many other whips that i work on throughout the course of the year um next up is my spring quaker by rosewood manor now this one sort of went into timeout didn't it and then it sort of came back out of timeout and i think the only reason for it coming back out of timeout was because of my little um velka patoki stand because this is one of those ones where there's a ton of color changes and at first when i first started stitching on this um which it stitched on the 28 count lugana um fabric by sparklies in colorway rose pot puree and i started it back in 2018 and when i first started it can't say that I particularly loved the Valdani threads. Then when I was stitching it, I felt that it was too bulky on the fabric and I was struggling with the fabric. So it went into timeout. But then I don't even know why or how I ended up putting it back out. I put it on my little stand. And although I haven't done a ton of extra stuff on it this year, I've still managed to achieve quite a lot. And it's one of those projects where... If I leave it on the stand next to me whilst I'm working and then I go on to a call and I just pull one thread of one colour, I stitch a little bit in that one colour, like a flower petal or, you know, a, a, a flower. And then I'll put it, I'll put it to one side and then I'll do again the same thing the next day. Before I knew it, I did actually get a bit of progress on it. And I think one of the reasons that I didn't actually like this straight off at first was because there's so many colour changes. You do, you do like, I don't know, 10, 10, 15 stitches and then you've got to end the thread because you can't run your thread at the back. You can't travel, you can't carry the thread. Um, and I think that I found quite off-putting. But because I'm now using it as a project that I do a tiny bit whilst I'm on calls or whilst I'm on my lunch, um, where you can only do one or two strands, it seems to be working. So it might just be the concept of when I sit down in the evening to sit and stitch something, I want to make the time that I use in the evenings as productive as possible and get as many stitches in as possible. And with this one, this is definitely a process stitching type project because there are so many colour changes. And I think, I think that for me was what sort of put me off to start with. But now, because I'm approaching it, using it as a, a pick up and put down project... I you, I'm, I'm, I'm leaning more towards it. So did I get a load done? No, not really. Am I overly fussed? No, not really. Will I still stitch on it? Yes, I will. So that was the whips for what rolled over from 2019. Short and sweet, wasn't it? So now, <laughs> you can see the trend here, people is the current whips started in 2020 and sort of i think the picture gives it away anyway it's almost like i've gone on some sort of sampler mission of which they're all hands across the sea <laughs> so the new starts for 2020 um this one is the one that i took off of deborah's hands so the lovely deborah in arizona um, who I went to visit back in February of 2020. Wow, did I realise when I was going to Deborah in 2020 that by March we would all be in lockdown and COVID would be rife. Oh, no, I didn't. 
Um, but whilst I was there, she showed us this project that she decided that she wasn't going to finish. She she'd done most of what you can see on this picture, um, and for one reason or another, she was just like, "I'm not going to stitch it." And uh, you know, if you want to take it off my hands, you can. So it's a Sarah Brazier, uh, Brazier, Braz, Brazier. Damn, it sounds like a bra. Sorry, I shouldn't say that. I don't mean it like that. Um, Sarah Brazier. Uh, 1829 the 2018 queen of the may it stitched one over one i started stitching this as soon as i got back from arizona in march of this year i cannot take credit for what you see on this image most of that stitching is deborah's work of which is divine let me say she she yeah she does the most amazing stitching so the bit that sort of sticks out past the flower so i think i completed that last flower within the border and did some of the border and then the bit that goes past and then i've done a couple of bits like token gestures in the middle but other than that that is all predominantly deborah's work it is a monster it is huge i mean when you look at how much i've done or how much is done on the project there and then you look at the picture of what it's supposed to look like you can see that there is, yeah, this is going to be a, a work in progress that will be, I don't know, maybe it will still be a work in progress when I'm about 80. But as long as I'm still stitching on it, it will stay in my whips. So, but yeah, I absolutely love it. And I think I love it because it's so different. It's so different to anything else that I stitch on or anything else that I've got. So the next new start that I had was my birthday new start. So this is, again, Hands Across the Sea, Elizabeth Weston. It's stitched on a 32 count Belfast linen in colourway Tudor Rose, which I got from Pole Stitches. It's being stitched two over two, and I started it in September of this year. This was one of the ones that when I went to the attic in uh, Arizona, um, our first day, I think the day after we landed, we went to the attic with Deborah. And this one was screaming at me. I saw I saw the stitched version of it. And although I'm not I've never been drawn to samplers, I've never really sort of thought that the samplers would be my thing. Every time I sort of circled around the shop, I just kept coming back to it and I kept and I almost picked it up and purchased it there and then whilst I was there. But I was like, no, don't do it, Teresa. Hold off. You've got enough projects. You need to really love it to be able to you know or to to go down the whole rabbit hole of purchasing it so I didn't purchase it but I did see it and you know what from that moment on I just kept thinking I really should have picked that up I really should have got that one so I I buckled I buckled and decided that I was going to have a new birthday new start and that it would be the Elizabeth Weston because I loved it so much when I saw it in the shop now that I'm stitching on it however I think I might have made a bit of a boo-boo in doing it two over two. It's noon. It's time for lunch. Remember to wash your hands. That was Google. <laughs> With my reminders. Um, sorry about that. Welcome to my world, people. I have Google tell me when to get up, when to wash my hands. Reminds me that I need to go and stretch my legs because otherwise I forget and I just sit here all day and don't move. So, yeah. It's all about a healthy life. I need to make sure that with this whole working from home and being at home that I, I, I stretch my legs when I need to. Um, back to the project. Sorry about that. Um, in hindsight, and it was only the fact that I think it was Ladybird Stitcher when I was messaging. She turned around and she said, did you not think about doing it one over one? You know, when you're sort of sitting there kicking yourself. I was like, if I had done it one over one, it would be half the size that it is and half the amount of thread. But because I've sort of got to where I'm at, I'm sort of undecided whether I've got too far to sort of rip it out and start again. Maybe that's a conversation for a floss tube video and you can all tell me what you think because doing it two over two... It's just going to take, it's it's, it's going to be huge. The fabric is already huge. And it's going to take a whole lot of thread for two over two. But that said, there are portions of this that are two over two. And a, and a charted two over two. And there are portions of this chart that are charted one over one. 
So to get that delicateness of some of the aspects of it, of the design, I'm thinking, well, maybe I should keep it as two over two and then where there's one over one, it will look all delicate and yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm still just going to rock and roll with two over two unless we have a discussion in 2021. But that is sort of where we're at. But progress-wise, the fact that it was only started in September and I haven't really done too much on it, I'm, 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 I'm quite happy with where we got to on that one. So this year, new starts in 2020 and finished in 2020. Yay! Happy days. There is nothing like a finish. Um, it's just rather disappointing that I only achieved one this year. And it's this one, as you all know. And it's towards the end of the year. So it is the Cricut Collection Autumn. And I stitched it on a 28 count Brittany Lugana. Um, it's a chromatic alchemy fabric um, Ferona colorway. And I stitched it two over two. I started it in September of this month this year and I finished it in November and FFO'd it at the end of November and absolutely love it and as you can see there it is hanging up because it is still officially autumn <laughs> so because it's still officially autumn I'm allowed to still have it up even though it's sort of Christmassy and the rest of the house is Christmas themed but I'm fine with that absolutely loved working on this and it just goes to prove that there are some projects that if you're really drawn to them, you just you just can't put them down. This was one of those projects. And it's so different to anything else that I stitched. But that that's the proof to me that I shouldn't always just look at things that I think I would normally stitch. I need to be looking at things that I wouldn't normally stitch because I get surprises like this. <laughs> Very happy with my finish. So... Although I only achieved one finish of the year, I did achieve FFOs for 2020. Now, hands up, I didn't finish them, but they did go to the finishers and they went to the framers. So I've decided to put them in just so that you can see them. So the High Heels Collection by Soda Stitch. Again, I'm sorry, but this chart has been discontinued. There was, um, I think there was a collection one, collection two, collection three. I am kicking myself that I didn't get the other two versions, which were three different types of shoes in different colours, because they would have looked amazing hanging out. Now, that said, stitching them, I didn't enjoy. So, as you can see, it's, I started it in September 2016, and it took me until March of 2019 to complete the stitching. So, I, I've got no excuse there. Um other than the fact that at the time that I was stitching on them, I didn't think that they looked that great. But once I got them framed, however, that was a whole nother, a whole nother view. So I got them fully finished on the 15th of January, 2020. They're now hanging up in here, over there. Um, and as soon as I put them into the frame with that mat board and it come back from the framer, I was like, Do you know what? I love them absolutely love them and the other one that is ffo'd for 2020 is my heaven and earth design qs grace face 2 by josephine wall this was the one that was stitched on the 18 count um it was started in 2015 it was finished in 2018 and it was ffo'd in january of this year and i love her and she is now hanging up pride of place in my living room um so yeah love 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 the ffos people so going from love love loving ffos we go to ufos now <laughs> you don't know this until now so this is like a little this is what i've decided after doing lots of reflecting over the last couple of weeks on my projects this year's whips i've decided to ufo so this is going to come as a total surprise, people, because none of you knew that I was going to do this. But I'm sorry, Arabasca Rose by West End Embroidery, which I started in 2019, didn't get stitched on at all. I didn't touch it at all throughout the course of 2020. So I've come to the decision that I'm going to UFO it. Now, these ones, or the, 
this one and the one after, I've decided that I'm UFOing, but I'm not, they're still here. They're just going to go up out the way and I will see whether I get any undying urges to pull them out and stitch on them. This one, the reason I decided to UFO it is because I'm struggling with the chart. So everything was making total sense. And then we got to a bit where you have to do this design that goes backwards and forwards, which I did. But then when it's saying to carry the thread, if I do what it says and carry the thread the way it says to carry it, to go to the next bit, it would mean that you can see the dark thread behind the canvas. So I'm like, that can't be right. They can't actually really expect me to be doing that because I'm going to see it at the back. I've looked at it. I got my husband to look at it. We both agreed that's what it's telling us to do. So I kept doing it, kept looking at it, and I kept disliking it because I'm like, I can see the thread at the back of the canvas work and I'm not supposed to see that. So I'm not happy. So that is the reason that one is now a UFO. And please, everyone, don't shout, scream. I know that some of you, I've even enabled you to go and purchase this because, because I was stitching it. It's Shades of Winter by Nancy's Needles and I started it in September 2019 and again this did not get touched on once this year. Not once did I pull this out. I know why. It's because I went wrong and I kept unpicking it and restitching it and kept going wrong all over again. I had all sorts of trouble with that um, metallic-y thread and the fact that every time I pulled it it would go stringy and yeah. Um, I don't know what to say other than I've gone wrong I keep stitch, I keep unstitching I keep pulling it out and pulling it out and going back as far as I think and then restitching it and it's no different to where it was the first time so I'm obviously not going back far enough but then at the same time I'm, like, I'm not committing myself to pull the whole lot out and starting all over again um, and I really don't like that metallic-y thread so the fact that I didn't pick it up at all and didn't even think about it through the course of the year tells me that that has to be a UFO. Again, this is one of the ones that I'm just going to put up out the way. I'm, I'm not getting rid of it. I'm not passing it on to anyone else. I'm just, just giving it a time out, not adding it to the whips for this year. If I get any undying urges that I would like to pull it out or I think I want to pull it out, then it could basically come back out of being a UFO. But currently... My mindset tells me this is a UFO and it won't be coming back. So I'm sorry, people. That's just not for me. And this one... <sighs> yes, I know. I know. Frosty Forest by Country Cottage, which I started in 2017. And you know how hard I have found working on this project. Um... I don't, well, the dates are wrong on here. So at the moment that says as of December 2018. That should say as of December 2019. The big picture to the right is where it was as of the end or the beginning of December this year. And I did get the house almost done. I'd done the snow. I'd done the gate. And I was like, you know what? It took just too long. It shouldn't take this long. I mean, look. Look how long it took me one year to finish that house and do a bit of snow. And still I was, you know, really happy to force myself to pick it up. So the lovely Todd, my good friend Todd, when I was talking about it on my last Floss Tube video, turned around and said, Teresa, if you don't want to stitch on it, send it to me. I'll stitch on it for you. I'll stitch it for you. And I'm like... And you know when you're sitting there thinking, God, you know, he's brave taking that on. And then I was like, well, if he wants to stitch it, I'll let him stitch it. But I'm like, but if he's going to stitch it and go through all the pain and agony of stitching all that white, he needs to keep it. So basically, Todd has now taken my Frosty Forest, so it is not going to waste by any stretch of the imagination. Um... I gave him all of the charts to complete the whole set of nine along with all the little charm packs. And do you know what? Literally within about a week, I think it was a week or 10 days after I'd given it to him, it already stitched like a whole nother block. So it was like, well, there, there's the proof. There's the proof. When you love something and you love to work on something, you will stitch on it. If you don't, 
then you won't. So I don't feel badly for giving this one up. The fact that it's gone to a lovely new home, I'm, I'm more than happy with. And he's, he loves working on it. So I have no problems with that whatsoever. And there we go. We're at the end. That is the review of the side-by-side -side comparisons for 2020. So that is the whips. And you can understand now why I was really quite disappointed with, with where I got to and where I was at because I was expecting so much more for the year and actually have come out of it worse off this year than any other year. So just so that I can show you what I see, because you're probably sitting there thinking, well, that wasn't too bad, Teresa. Some of those projects got, you know, nice big chunks of work done. Some of them did, you're right, but some of them didn't. So what I'm about to show you is my spreadsheets. And as you can see at the top, this one over here is my spreadsheet for 2019. And this was my spreadsheet from 2020. Now, obviously, some of the projects are different, but you can automatically see straight away everything that's highlighted in the pink, like the dark pink, were finishes for that year. So 2019 was one, two, three, four, five finishes for the year. Whereas over on the right-hand side in the blue, there's just one finish. So that instantly, as soon as I look at that, I'm like, wow, is that all I managed? But what really sort of tells the tale for me, what really sort of tells me what I really need to know are these numbers here. So this is all that I've stitched throughout the course of the months. I've showed you this spreadsheet before, so it's not something that you won't recognize. But the biggest numbers that make the biggest impact on me are these numbers here. So Back in 2019, my total day stitching in the year on these projects was 213. Whereas this year, 176. So you know when you're like, well, is there a trend? Is there, is there something that's different? You know, is, what is it? And I have to say that when I've looked at, I've looked at sort of these numbers... You know, and you look at these numbers here. So this is the numbers, so January through to December. And it's counting the number of days within the month that I've stitched. And this is the same for 2019. And the very early part of 2019, I'd done a ton of stitching. And then for the summery months, it all sort of went a bit go slow and then towards the end of the year when we got to sort of September onwards the numbers started to increase again so that that was what I sort of expected to see because I do have a tendency of you know after Christmas when you know everything to do with the shopping and the Christmas and the festivities is over I just settle myself down the weather is normally freezing cold I don't go anywhere I don't do anything but I do do a lot of stitching so I tend to get that until we get into sort of end of, you know, sort of the spring summertime when all of a sudden the garden wakes up. So then all of a sudden my stitching goes on a real go slow because one, it gets too hot to stitch indoors and two, I'm always super busy out in the garden. But spring, I tend to sort of be able to manage that because it, it's a lot of greenhouse work. So I'll go out into the greenhouse first thing in the morning, do my gardening stuff and bring all my little seedlings on. And then in the evenings, there's really nothing to do because the garden hasn't really took off. So my stitching still happens. So end of spring tends to be sort of, I still manage to get my stitching done. But the summer is when I normally see it wane off, which is what you can see on these spreadsheets. For 2019, that is exactly what you see. The summer months, I don't really stitch. I mean, one month I didn't stitch at all. There was not one day that was stitched. Now... When we look at 2020, however, I don't really quite know. I, d I don't know what to make of this, if I'm honest. So 2020, January, I did well. But then February, March and April, I didn't do very well at all, which was the first part of lockdown. So this is where I was obviously occupying hubby. May, June and July... 
and August and September, I have to say, are quite surprising because they are double digit numbers. So I obviously done more stitching this, this year in the summer than I did the year before by quite a lot. September got a good number, then October, November, and definitely December this year. Just, well, I don't even know what happened to those. I mean, literally, it's as if I was like, no, sorry, too busy. Admittedly, I was making dioramas and my Christmas cards. So I'm, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back that it's not that I've done nothing. I have took on other things. But my stitching really took a hit, which I found really quite enlightening because although I knew it was bad I thought I would still see the same trend I thought I'd still see lots of stitching at the beginning of the year no stitching in the middle and a reasonable amount towards the end of the year and that is not what I'm seeing for this year so that just goes to prove that even though I've had more time theoretically I've been at home a hell of a lot We've not gone anywhere. We've not done anything. The dynamics of what COVID has caused, even with all this extra time on my hands, and I've still not managed to to stitch even remotely the same number. Either either the same number of days within the 200 days mark or the trend. The trend is off. The number of days is off. It's been quite enlightening. But this is why I like to track using my tracker, I have to say. Because this is what it flags up to me. It flags up everything that I need to know. Um, so that's the comparison between 2019 and 2020. So then now to look at what I've, what I've achieved this year on the projects this year. You can see, now when I was saying to you about my 2016, so my oldest projects are the ones that I feel that I pull out, I'm always working on them. And would you believe it? I felt that and I know that because if you look here, the two biggest bars on the whole of this spreadsheet for the whole of this year is Alternative Reality, which got 26 days, and my Evening in the Park, which got 30 days. So the two projects that are my oldest projects are the ones that I am I have gone to more this year than any of my other projects. The only other one was my Castles in the Air, which did get a good chunk of work. That got 19 days worth of stitching. Everything else was sort of a bit random. And you can see this is the reason why I decided that I was I'm um, I'm cutting off um the Arabasca Rose and the Shades of Winter, big fat zeros, absolutely nothing in those. So I'm like, well, there's no point in me doing them. There's the door. Hold that thought, people. So like I said, you can see, this is why I love my spreadsheet so much because not only do I get to see what it looked like last year versus what it looks like this year, but then I also get to see, sometimes it reinforces what I already know. So, Arabasca Rose and Shades of Winter, I didn't touch at all for the year. So it makes sense that they would become UFOs. Frosty Forest, it got seven touches. It's not the smallest amount. I have to say, Peacock's Lagoon got the smallest amount and Winter White Santa. Um, but Frosty Forest, the only reason that got seven touches was because I was kept trying to persevere, but absolutely detested it. Whereas I don't have that feeling with any of my other projects. So that was the reason that I was quite happy to let Frosty Forest go, along with the fact that someone was prepared to take it on and it wasn't just going to go to waste. It was going to go to a loved home and it was going to actually get finished, which I think it deserved. Me and my whole, oh, well, I'll just do four and turn it into a pillow when I had all those other charts that made the whole setup, the series, it just didn't make sense. So to give that away to Todd just made total sense. Um... But this is why I like my spreadsheets. My spreadsheets work for me for this purpose so that I can actually really visualise, I can see. So what this does reinforce is one of my next talking points, um, which is alternative reality and evening in the park are my two oldest whips, yet they are the ones that get the least, the most amount of love 
Sorry, let me start that again. Alternative reality and evening in the park are the two projects that have had the most love this year. They are also my oldest whips. So I am automatically knowing to push forward, but I'm absolutely loving working on them. So for plans for 2021, now I don't normally do plans for 2021, do I? You don't normally get the luxury of that. Let me just flick you over. Hold on a minute. There we go. Um, I don't very often do plans. Purely because uh, best laid plans. I, if, if I ever make plans, I never stick to them. Well, sometimes I find that I don't stick to them. Um, and I would like to try and make sure that I do stick to them. But with everything that's happened this year and the way that it's all panned out, it has highlighted to me some of the things that I did know and some of the things that I didn't know. Um, so plans for 2021. I've decided that I am not necessarily winging 2021. I, uh, this year I would like to try and have some sort of focus or plan. So let me share my screen now with you. Okay. Okay. So this is my stitching plan for 2021. I went pink this time, decided we wanted something different. And I've signed up. So the first thing that I have decided, because at first, with the fact that with the whip go from 2020, I did most of the whip go, but then there was a couple of months that I didn't complete. So I was like, do I do it again or don't I? But I have to say, the whip go Facebook group that's run by Jessie Marie, um, really did help me try and stay accountable for my own because it's, I'm not accountable because of someone else I'm accountable because I decided but I did find that when I had something where it was like well you need to do this during that month it, just that bit that tended to work for me more than well what should I do this month or should I do this should I do this should I? there's too many options when I give myself should I's so, the whip go for 2021, I decided that I was going to do it because it did hold me accountable, but I decided to do it differently to last year. So last year, it was like, I gave myself goals like 500 stitches on that project or finish the corner of that project. This year, we're going slightly different. So we're, it's, it's basically, I'm going to show you my whip go board. Um with a twist on the focus so here is my whip go board now for those that are on the whip go you know you you've all got your whip go balls on the go and for those that don't know anything about whip go uh whip go is a facebook group um that's run by jesse marie does stuff there was a lovely lady that in the files put a template for one of the boards which is what you're looking at now so I was a bit lazy this year I couldn't be bothered to create my own board she made a great template so I thought I would use the template um, so this is a template that you can get from the WIPGO Facebook group within the files if you've signed up for it this year I've gone slightly different um, Obviously, you can see here, goals not met, goals met. So it will change color depending on whether I meet the goals. But this is where the difference comes in. So whereas before I did it number of stitches or to complete a portion or to do whatever, this year I've decided that I'm going with five days. So each number that is called the respective square or project will get five days worth of stitching in that month. The numbers have already been called for this month, of which we got three. So we got not only the free space, but there was two numbers. So the three space came up um, came up for January. Um, no numbers are ever called more than once. So that's the whole point of the board. So you will always get to stitch something new. You'll never get the same number called. So you can see here, so that for January... Um, Evening in the park, got called for five days. 
and the free space, which means I can pick a project of my choice and alternative reality. Now, what you will notice from my whip go board here, let me make it a little bigger for you so you can see it a bit better, she says. What you can see from this is there is a whole lot of evening in the park and alternative reality running through this spreadsheet. And there, that is the goal. The goal is the fact that those are the projects that are my oldest whips. I've decided that given that they're my oldest whips and I still love to work on them, but I really do want to get them done. I'm going to make those focus pieces for 2021. I don't normally have focus pieces and I certainly don't normally have plans for 2020 or I don't normally do planning for the year I just sort of wing it this year I think is important that because we really don't know how the year is going to pan out I mean at the moment they're saying that there's the likelihood for at least until April May possibly June we will still be worrying ourselves with covid and potential lockdowns and different tiers to be in um but then after that who knows they're basically saying life could go back to normal i don't ever think we're going to go back to normal i think we'll have a new normal um but because obviously the year is an unknown i don't know whether that means that i'm going to then have to go back into the office whether i'm going to start commuting again so there's all these dynamics and differences but that said, the one thing that I have proven is that whether I'm commuting into London or not commuting into London, if I'm in lockdown and I have my family around me too much and they're all here requiring my time and my needs, um, I don't really get that much stitching done anyway. So, you know, it's as broad as it is long. So there was me sitting there thinking, well, it's all because of COVID. Well, it sort of is, but it sort of isn't. But that said, I don't know for sure until until next year, until 2021, how I can plan. Because planning, planning to know when you're going to stitch on stuff is very difficult if you don't know whether you're going to be commuting and whether, you know, life as you knew it is going to return to the way it was and the dynamics are going to change or whether we're going to have a sort of half and half. So... Although I want plans, I don't want such structured plans that, you know, I have to do this once a month and I have to do that once a month. I, don't, I can't do that. But the whip go, I can do. So the whip go of just picking the square for the month and stitching for five days on whatever that said. So that is one of my plans for 2021. See? Even I'm making plans for 2021. It's like unheard of. Um, what other stuff did I want to tell you? Um, so other plans for 2021. I'm not going to sit here and say that it's going to be a no new start new year. Because I don't think it will be. Well, I know it won't be. Because I've already decided that I'm going to start my winter project which i haven't started yet see there's another thing that i said i was going to start I haven't started yet um so what i will say is although i will have new starts they will only be new smalls like the equivalent of like my autumn anything anything much bigger than that as far as i'm concerned is medium so i would say that if i do have new starts this year they will all be smalls um highlights for 2020 i think the highlights for 2020 have to be my release of my little digital planners absolutely love my digital planner um i'm actually gonna start my process of filling out my my new one for moving forwards into 2021 um and do my planner sort of dates and and get my calendars set up in there um, and then I will use my digital planner day by day, week on week, and then transfer the information from just the stitching tracker into my spreadsheet at the end of every month. And that's how it, that's how I managed to sort of be able to see 
comparisons which is how I like to be I like to see did I do better than last year or didn't I or what was different and then I can sort of relate in my head well it was different because that happened or because this happened um this year well this year I have no idea how I managed to stitch more in the summer months than I did in the winter months I do not know but yeah there you go just goes to show um what else is there so plans for the channel for 2021 well my plan is to continue the channel you know we've we've had you know with with heading into year seven of floss tube i feel like i'm i'm one of the old timers now <laughs> um but yeah i mean the plan is that my floss tube channel will continue and as long as i can still produce content that people like to watch then i will still make videos um, but what I would try to, well, what I would like to try and do um, for this year moving forwards um, is try to upload more videos. But then, because of the number of subscribers that I've got, there's a real mixed bag. You know, there's a lot of people that don't like Stitch With Me Lives. But then there's a lot of people that don't like Stitch With Me's. But then there's a lot of people that like my floss tube monthly updates, but they don't like my little tutorials. So it's very difficult. You always end up getting sort of a mixed bag of comments where you'll have a, a load of people that say, oh, Teresa, thanks so much. Really appreciated that video and, you know, it helped. Which then makes me think, well, there you go. That was worth making the content because people like to watch that. But then on the flip side of that, you'll end up getting people saying, Teresa, you know, I like you, but I don't, I don't like you stitch with me. Or I don't, I don't like you know your live streams um it's really difficult so yeah i mean any suggestions you've got for videos that you that you would like i will try and find sort of the happy balance and the happy medium the problem is is heading into 2021 the plan <laughs> best laid plans the plan is that we will start the loft conversion that was supposed to have been started before hubby decided to break his leg to get out of it um the plan is that as soon as we get through the worst of the the winter weather that we will start the loft conversion so yes you know timing might be that i might not get as many videos up as i would like um through the course of that but once once the the bulk of that is done then obviously life will start returning back to normal so therefore more more videos um but any suggestions you've got for videos um let me know because it, it's very difficult as a content creator, as someone that's been on Floss Tube now for seven years. You know, I know there's a lot of Floss Tubers out there that they put up videos weekly. I, I couldn't sit there and tell you that I can put up videos weekly for weekly updates. I mean, I, I, I know that I can manage my monthly updates um, and various other ones ad hoc here and there as and when. Um, so it's more about the ad hoc as and when really. What what do you want? You know, I mean... My thoughts were maybe if I could get some more Stitch With Me's and do some Stitch With Me's or whether you prefer Stitch With Me Lives. I don't know. Um, but yeah, give me give me your thoughts. What would you like to see? Because whatever you would like to see, then I will try and do more of. But it's no good me doing Stitch With Me Lives if half of the people that watch me don't actually like Stitch With Me Lives and prefer just the Stitch With Me's that have been recorded. So... I'm going to base it on sort of to see what feedback I get from you guys as to, you know, what I push forward for 2021 for this channel. So, um, and the only other thing that I was going to try to do within 2021 is try and sort of stay a bit more on top of my blog posts on my website because I do, there are a lot of people that don't necessarily watch the Floss Tube videos or the Floss Tube, but they do read the blog. And I've been very lapsed with my blog. Um, of updating that as and when I've got finishes or when I've got a new start. So I'm going to try and align my YouTube channel with my website blog together is the plan. But that all said, what I will say as well is for 2021, my anticipation is that I won't just do stitching. You know, I've got quite into my paper crafts now. You know, I've got my little Cricut maker. I've got a little Gemini Junior that I got for a Christmas present. Um, I made all my Christmas cards. I've made a ton of birthday cards. And my plan is for 2021 because Christmas cards aren't too expensive. But you know, like the really flash 
personal cards that you buy for your family. They're really expensive. I mean, I don't know. Most of the cards that I buy for my family now are like, I don't know, between five and seven pound per card. And I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. Some of the cards that I made for Christmas for my family this year were actually really quite nice cards. And they didn't cost me anywhere near that. So my my plan for 2021 is to make as many of my own cards as I can, which will then obviously turn my hand to other things and do a bit of paper crafting as well. So, so yeah, I do have my own little set goals for 2021. And I would like to think that this channel, my stitching and my new craft of like my paper stuff will be like the new thing going forwards for 2021. Of course, gardening is still there. Gardening will always be there for me. So come spring and summer, I intend to be romping about in the garden, in me wellies, in me hunters, <laughs> digging, manuring, and hoping that my tulip bulbs come up. We've had so much rain recently that I'm beginning to wonder whether they've got waterlogged and uh, whether they're even going to appear this year. So, so yes. So there you go. I've rambled enough, people. That is my 2020 year-end review. I am pleased to see the back end of 2020, but that said, although I'm seeing the back end of 2020 coming along, 2021's still a bit of an unknown. So I'm hopeful, and I'm, I'm hoping that the news that they keep telling us that, you know, the vaccines should all be distributed by... Uh, mid to late spring and that we should you know we should all be in a good place by then I'm, I'm i'm fingers crossed for that we are still in tier four here they've basically now started talking about a tier five which is because i'm i'm in the worst affected area apparently at the moment um needless to say i barely leave the house so me and mum we stay very confined and we're happy to stay confined so it is what it is, and it will be what it will be. Um, we will just do our very best, at stay positive and stay chipper. So thank you all so, so much for your support this year. And I look forward to seeing you all again in 2021 with all that it brings. So I wish you all a lovely, happy new year, as best as you can celebrate it. Um, and I'll see you on the other side. So until next time, people, take care and bye-bye for now.